I feel like tonight God wants to lay some foundation for the weekend. So I want to read to you the, requi the requirements of a watchman. Okay. The required knowledge, skills, and abilities of a watchman. General knowledge of the duties and responsibilities of a watchman. Ability to think and act quickly in emergencies. The ability to write accurate reports of incidences, willingness to work nights or on unusual shifts. Oh, praise God. God bless you if you got the 3 a.m. shift. Integrity, reliability, courage, sobriety, good vision and hearing. Yeah, because, you know, you can't be a good watchman if you can't see and hear. Good physical condition and good spiritual condition. Okay? The ability to think quick. The ability, when something happens, to not react, but to respond by the Spirit. Come on now. The ability to crucify your flesh so your flesh is not what's reacting but you respond by the Spirit in moments of crisis. I believe God wants to anoint the church to bring divine intervention during moments of crisis. I even believe that God wants to put, you know, I, I, got, I got into my hotel room today and I sent Pastor Trish a photo of the gift basket they gave me. And I, the first thing I said when I saw that gift basket was, wow. I haven't seen a gift basket like that in a long time. It was big, grapes overflowing from it. And I'm telling you, that's a sign of abundance. And I'm telling you, there's a spirit of abundance over this weekend, over your life. There's a spirit of abundance, of overflow. I so wholeheartedly believe we are going to see such an anointing within the church, even of new entrepreneurship. Where God is going to anoint you with creative ideas that will help. We've heard a lot about the transfer of wealth, but it's going to help facilitate divine wealth. Oh, hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you, when God starts to give you creative ideas, don't just sit passively on them. Oh, please. Don't get a great idea from Jesus and then just hide it away. Take what God gives you and ask him for wisdom on how to apply it and begin to do something with it. And the enemy, watchman, that you're going to have to contend with with that is the enemy of procrastination. That says, okay, I know, I know, I know, God, I know, I know, I know. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. You know, we tell ourselves we'll get around to it for a really long time. And then 10 years later, we're still trying to get around to it. Oh, it just got quiet. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I believe the church is going to be anointed to act quickly in emergencies. There's going to be supernatural power on the church. Supernatural power. I think it's really important, and I really sense this in my heart tonight. Integrity, reliability, courage, sobriety. These are important characteristics of a watchman. And I feel like we are in a season where it is very, very important that we learn some lessons. Is it okay if we learn some lessons? Yeah. Is it okay if we don't repeat mistakes? How many would love to see integrity promoted over gifting? There's something about us as charismatics, charismaniacs. There's something about us. We get mesmerized by giftings. We do. We love them. But, and, I, and I understand. We love the gifts of the Spirit. We love when God moves. We love unique, unusual gifts. 
But I think the Lord, God's heart, is that we wouldn't just be quick to elevate gifts, but we would be quick to elevate character. Because gifts can shipwreck. Character will sustain you to the finish line. Come on now. You can seek the gifts, but I'm telling you, when you seek the gifts of God in your life, I want you to equally, if not more, seek the character of God in your life. Because the character is going to be the wineskin that sustains the wine that God pours into you. Come on now. If you don't have a sustainable wineskin, that wine's going to spill and you'll lose the wineskin and the wine. Come on now, how many want sustainability in your life? You want sustainability of God's anointing, sustainability of whatever gift God trusts you with. You want that thing to sustain itself and grow and just steadily, consistent. You know one of the greatest secrets in life is consistency. You can be a little turtle, but if you're a consistent turtle, you will win the race. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, sometimes, you know, we get the explosion, wah, and then they're the first ones out. But then you have the little consistent turtles, step by step by step by step, and all of a sudden they're crossing the finish line. Consistency is real, it's a real important quality. So we're laying just some foundation for watchmen. How many want to be an anointed watchman here tonight? Because I believe in the watchman anointing. And I believe that God is going to anoint you not only to see, but he's going to anoint you with authority to be able to do something about what you see. Okay? As an anointed watchman, you're not just going to see problems. You're going to be an anointed solutionist. Come on now, you're not just going to see the issues, you're not just going to see the problems and talk about the problems, you're going to be anointed to be part of the solution to those problems. Hallelujah. How many of you don't want to cause problems? You want to bring solutions? Come on now, you know who you are. We want to be part of the solution. Okay, Ezekiel 33, 1 through 7. I'm going to read this. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, speak to your people and say to them, when I bring the sword against the land and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people, then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning, and the sword comes and takes their life, their blood will be on their own head. Since they heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the warning, their blood will be on their own head. If they had heeded the warning, they would have saved themselves. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes someone's life, that person's life will be taken because... Of their sin, but it will, but it will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When God speaks to you, you have got to sound his trumpet. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but it's important that we have eyes to see. Now, we're going we're gonna to look at some of these things here because the watchman really is a prophet. When we call ourselves watchmen, you're prophetic. Because a watchman, and we're going we're gonna to see this, a watchman really can see from a distance. 